in mathematical methods part 1 we are going to talk about the vectors which are having magnitude and direction let us take a vector like this this is the tail of the vector that's the head some examples of vectors are displacement velocity acceleration force etc types of vectors let us take a vector a and b like this then they have both magnitude and direction same and hence they are known as the equal vectors now let us take vector a like this and b in the opposite direction but the magnitude is same same way we can consider vectors a and b in the opposite direction like this such vectors are known as the opposite vectors we can have vector like null vector or zero vector as the name suggests the magnitude is zero example for a stationary particle velocity vector is zero also if an object is moving with uniform velocity then it has acceleration vector zero another type of a vector is a unit vector again as the name suggests magnitude is 1 unit vectors represented by u cap which is equal to m upon mod of m i cap j cap and k cap are the unit vectors along the x y and the z axis now let us see what is position vector we have r as o P vector and let us put it in a quadrant axis so that's the x-axis we have the y-axis so it will give the position of that particular vector so r vector is equal to op vector and this is known as the position vector another vector is the resultant vector which we get it from a single vector produced by two or more vectors we are now going to see more about the resultant vector in our addition of vectors now let us take a vector a and add a vector b to it then we get a resultant a vector plus b vector like this see the magnitude and the direction so that's your a vector plus b vector the direction is same as a and b but now let us take as a vector and subtract the two vectors subtracting two vectors implies the addition of one with the opposite of the other so it's a vector plus minus b vector so that will give you a vector like this it is in the direction of the bigger vector the one which is having a larger magnitude so that's a vector minus b vector and the direction is same as that of the longer vector now let us see the another way of adding it the triangle law of vector addition when the vectors are not in the same direction or they are not in the opposite direction also they are in, in any arbitrary direction so let us consider an example a vector in this direction and b vector in this direction let us add these two vectors when you add the two vectors let us take a vector parallel to this a vector and take b vector and place it in such a way that the tail of one is with the head of the other and now this is forming the two sides of the triangle and if you complete the triangle over here then it goes from the tail to the head and that gives you the resultant a vector plus b vector likewise you can also make another procedure now let us see how let us take this a vector project it over here in the same manner we can also put the head of one with the tail of other in this way but now the vector that you get is nothing but b vector plus a vector 
but note the direction and the magnitude of a vector plus b vector and b vector plus a vector. They are the same. So that's our triangle law vector addition. If two sides of a triangle represent two vectors of the same physical quantity, that is very important, same physical quantity in order, then the third side represents the magnitude and direction of the resultant taken from the starting point of the first vector to the end point of the second vector. Now let us see that for more than two vectors, how can we use triangle law? It is used one after another. That gives the resultant. Let us take an example of A vector, C vector, B vector, D vector and A vector to be added. So first we take A vector. You put tail and head together with B vector and then you have the C vector. You get A plus B, A vector plus B vector. And this A plus B vector now is the resultant. Now you take the C vector and then you get A vector plus B vector plus C vector. Then you take the D vector added to A vector plus B vector plus C vector that gives D vector. That way you get A vector plus B vector plus C vector plus D vector. And finally you have the E vector which is added to the whole A vector plus B vector plus C vector plus D vector with tail and head to be noted. And ultimately we get A vector plus B vector plus C vector plus D vector plus E vector. Now this is similar to the law of polygon of vectors. If you consider a polygon, the number of sides are more than two. What you see that the resultant vector is same as the triangle law which has been used. So that's addition of more than two vectors. Now let us see another way of adding vectors in parallelogram law vector addition. Now the name itself suggests we have a parallelogram. So we have a same A vector and B vector as we had taken earlier. Uh, but now instead of having the tail of one with the head of the other, you have the tail and the tail together. And now you complete a parallelogram. All of you know, in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel and equal in magnitude. So we draw, we complete the parallelogram here by drawing those sides and we draw a diagonal which is Passing from that same point where A and B are meeting. The tail and the tail is meeting. Actually it is having two diagonals. But you are going to consider that diagonal which comes out from the same point where A and B is joining. That's your diagonal and that represents the resultant vector R is equal to A vector plus B vector. So we have the parallelogram law. If two vectors of the same type. Again, same type, that is very important, originating from the same point is represented by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram. Then the diagonal represents the resultant vector both in magnitude and direction starting from that same point. Now, let us take the proof of law of parallelogram of vectors. Whatever we saw just now, but the geometrical method, the triangle law, the parallelogram law. Now we see the theory of it. So let us take an ideal parallelogram like this. Let us consider two vectors, p vector and q vector. And the angle between them is theta. We complete the parallelogram like this. So you have a triangle, the parallelogram OACB. The resultant vector is the diagonal R vector is equal to A vector plus B vector. You drop a perpendicular from C. You uh, just extend OA up to point D. Now you have got two triangles and this angle is also theta because two parallel lines and the corresponding angle that makes theta. In triangle ODC, it's a right angle triangle. So you have two right angle triangle, triangle here, ODC and the ADC. So let us consider the bigger triangle ODC. You have OC square is equal to OD square plus CD square that is by Pythagoras theorem. OC square is equal to OA plus AD the whole square plus CD square. 
R square is equal to O square plus 2OA AD plus AD square plus CD square. In triangle ADCAC, 